Sims 4 Growing Together stirred a lot of hype with the official trailer, but there's one article I found that articulates a sense of unease that might be shared by many in the Sims community. Here are my two top concerns about Growing Together as an expansion pack, but also how the team can overcome them. So I want to keep this very short and sweet. We're going to start with an article about Sims 4 Growing Together that I actually think brings up some pretty good points about gameplay concerns, and I will also express some of my own central concerns when I look at the official features. So let's get right into this article, we're going to have a discussion going, and I do hope that this will be a constructive one where we can talk about how this pack could also succeed. Fans of The Sims 4 are about to get some heartwarming family content. Not only has Electronic Arts revealed an upcoming update that includes an entirely new life stage, aka infants, but also a new expansion pack that will accompany the update. The Sims 4 Growing Together promises family-oriented gameplay and expanded social connection and interactive mechanisms. From building tree houses to hosting sleepovers and much of the content is designed around large groups of sims and this is going to be the central argument of this article and this is something i often say i try my best to judge packs in of themselves just for how successful the pack is but we do have to understand that the pack is going to be working in conjunction with the sims 4 as a whole while simmers have been able to grow large families in the game from the release of the original sims game there have been consistent issues regarding gameplay in involving larger groups. The problems around large groups worsened with Sims 4. The announcement for the trailer for Growing Together seemed to really focus on gameplay between entire neighborhoods. Hopefully, the Sims development team has fixed what could be game-breaking issues for the upcoming pack. Now, I will say, I don't know if I totally agree with that argument that we can really tell that by the trailer alone. We do know from some of the features that they are going to involve some group dynamics, but it's really hard to tell how much of this is going to really be big group or the entire neighborhood I think is a little bit of a stretch, but I still think that this argument has some interesting points. While The Sims 4 Growing Together might emphasize the issues with playing with multiple Sims, it's not an isolated event. Playing with a large family of Sims has always been an added challenge as the action cue that controls Sims behavior is the same regardless of household size. This requires a gamer playing with a family of 8 Sims to have to wrangle every single one. Sims will also consistently only perform necessary actions if directed by the player, making spontaneous group activities virtually unheard of. And I do agree with this for the most part. I feel like Sims 4 relies a little bit more on micromanagement, something I've talked about in the past, and so trying to orchestrate group events can be really trying. There's less spontaneous activity and a lot more impetus on the player to control things. He also mentioned the issues with previous packs, and this comes down to Sims 4 Dine Out and My Wedding Stories. It can take multiple hours for Sims to go out for dinner successfully. The process requires Sims to sit down, someone taking their order, compelling them to eat their food, and more, all requiring direct intervention from the player, and as we know, there's also a lot of bugs with this pack. Similar issues also occurred with Sims 4 Wedding Stories. When Sims refuse to sit down for a wedding ceremony, don't show up at all, or basically ignore cues. In the Sims 4 high school years, a teenage Sim often won't show up or sit down at desk during class. Now, I personally haven't had those issues in high school years. However, I do know some people have been very disappointed with high school years, and I'm going to go into that and tie that into my next argument. The upcoming family-oriented expansion pack is the opportunity to fix many of these issues that arise with playing with large groups of sims. Fixing the issues around sims autonomy in groups, one of the highlighted features of the pack is group walks, so that's a good point, and other family activities. These gameplay features won't be possible if only certain sims respond to the interaction while others ignore it. And honestly, this comes from a source I often don't agree with, but I feel like this hit a lot of really good points. Like I said, I don't think we can fully tell from the trailer or even the features how those are actually going to work, and it is possible that the team has done their due diligence and really fixed things up, but I do agree that those packs are good examples of good concepts in theory, but group dynamics really messing with the functionality. I also agree the impetus on micromanagement in Sims 4 does make it different in terms of spontaneous activities. As some people don't even like spontaneous activities, I'm one of the ones that does, but it still does place more impetus on player intervention. If the gameplay issues are resolved, many simmers may interact with existing Sims 4 content in new ways. For instance, parties and group gatherings created in the Sims 4 get-together will be more dynamic, college dorms and Sims 4 Discovery University will be busy, 
if these issues are not fixed when Sims 4 is retired, there is still hope that the upcoming Sims 5 base game will overhaul all existing gameplay. And we will be talking about Sims 5 on my channel soon. I don't know when that video is going to come out, but I am planning a video that's actually kind of hopeful and telling you about why I'm actually more hopeful for Sims 5. Now, as to my other concerns, well, my theory is that there might actually be limits, as I mentioned, for group activities. So, for instance, if we take a look at high school years, there were some limitations that Simmers honestly didn't like. For example, the classes you can't really interact very much in, and you can't have a high school just anywhere. So, there is kind of a balance between functionality and also sacrifices, and I personally think that the Sims 4 engine does limit the team. So I actually am hoping that there are some limitations in this pack so that the group interactions do work. But let's take a look at some of the confirmed features. So sometimes Sims just click. Your Sim might have natural social chemistry with a Sim they meet at a party, or they might naturally clash. So my concern always is how much in depth is this really going to go? Is it surface level content? Now I will say that the Sims team has added a lot of updates that I do think have improved the experience. I just think sometimes they are limited to how traits actually work in the game. I think they're limited by the deeper AI issues, and I think they're also limited by the emotion system. So the question here is what impact will this actually have? Are we going to rely on mood and emotion bus, or is there going to be some deeper integration that really impacts relationships to the degree it sounds like? And likewise, this ties into this feature as well. Key choices and milestones will shape who your sims are. Unlock and change personality traits throughout your sims' lives as they cope through midlife crises, respond to family requests to move in, and more. So I do think that could be really fun and interesting where family members are kind of conflicting with each other, especially if they don't agree with requests to move in. For I do think Sims 4 leans more towards, again, player choice, and my question is, are Sims going to be upset if these requests are refused? Are they going to be upset if they are accepted? And maybe the family dynamics change. So I'm really curious to see if these family dynamics are going to be really revolutionary, or they're just going to be a little bus and Sims are going to be upset here or there. So of course, when I have concerns or critique of Sims 4, I actually do believe in being constructive. Rather than simply saying the game is going to be trash or no good, I don't really see any point to that. Rather, I would like to talk about how the Sims team could make things good. Like I said, I do think it might be important to have some limitations so that the gameplay works as intended. I do think, and I will discuss in a future video, that a new game engine, such as the Unreal Engine that they are using for Sims 5, is going to be useful because I think at times, it's not the packs that are a problem, but the base game engine itself. I do think that this pack has a lot of promise. I do think that the group interactions and how detailed and in-depth some of these features are is left to be seen. So let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. Like I said, I do think the Sims team is trying very hard on this. I am curious what we're going to see next. I'm curious what the live stream is going to reveal. And of course, I will be covering that when that comes out. So let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. And as always, take care and I'll see you in the next one.